Do AMD Ryzen CPUs degrade at a faster rate than other CPUs? This isn't a new question, and there are some people who have done tests to help answer this, but I don't think any of them have quite covered the entire story. I have a theory that PBO is responsible for faster degradation on Ryzen. So if you're a Ryzen owner who's currently experiencing stability problems, or if you just want to hear my theory on why PBO is a bad idea, then you should definitely stay tuned for this video. Hey, welcome back to Phaser Tech. Now this is sort of a follow-up to a previous video I made where I did a review on some budget memory from Team Group. I found them to be excellent overclockers. However, the limiting factor while using them with my Ryzen 3900X is that its Infinity Fabric speed was holding back the memory overclock. It's best to run the Infinity Fabric at half the speed of the memory, so I ended up settling with a memory speed of 3600 MHz with 4 DIMMs, as I explained in that video. I also had PBO enabled and set a decent undervolt on the vCore of about 100 mV. I ran extensive stress tests to make sure it was stable. Well, over the course of the past several months, my system has become unstable and not able to maintain those speeds anymore. And it's not because the memory can't do it, it's actually the infinity fabric that can't keep up anymore. Now I was running with a low SOC voltage of about 1 volt, so I thought increasing the voltage to the stock 1.1 volts would help regain stability. But it didn't. The infinity fabric had degraded and simply couldn't do that overclock anymore. So I decided to reduce the memory speed to about 3400 MHz. All was good again, and it passed the stress test. But then a few months later, the same thing happened again. So now I'm running at the officially supported speed of 3200 MHz. Not only did I need to remove the memory overclock, but I also had to increase the CPU core voltage to regain stability. I kept PBO enabled, but I had to remove the CPU undervolt and set it to stock voltage. This noticeably increased the overall temperature of the CPU, not only under load but when it's idle as well. Now, CPU degradation isn't anything new when it comes to overclocking, as it's fairly normal for an overclock system to become unstable after several years and require a bump in voltage or a reduction in speed to regain stability. But in this case, I found degradation after only a few months, which seemed to be awfully fast especially since I was conservative with the voltages, so I decided to investigate further. Turns out this question has been asked a few times before. Do Ryzen CPUs degrade at a faster rate than normal? Well, some YouTubers such as the overclocking guru, Der Bauer, have tested this and found some really good data. But I don't think his test covered the entire story. He concluded there was minimal degradation after 6 months of stress testing several overclocked Ryzen CPUs. However, the systems used in this test were set to a static all-core overclock rather than the more commonly used PBO feature that AMD aggressively markets. PBO, which stands for Precision Boost Overdrive, is marketed by AMD as being an easy overclock solution that dynamically boosts the CPU frequency. After browsing various overclocking forums with people talking about Ryzen systems, it became clear that more people are running PBO rather than setting a manual overclock. It appears this is something Der Bauer overlooked, and I think he should have included at least one system with PBO enabled in his tests, because it seems the real answer to the question of whether Ryzen systems degrade faster is actually, well, it depends. Are you using PBO? Now I know I don't have data to back up this claim and my experience is mostly anecdotal, but there are some compelling points to back up my theory. As always with overclocking, your mileage may vary and different chips will react differently, but it seems that PBO was the cause for my CPU's rapid degradation and I wouldn't be surprised if it's the cause for many other Ryzen owners as well. Again, if you check out any overclocking forum and read the threads about Ryzen, you'll be sure to find many stories describing the same situation, where their system was stable for a while and then suddenly became unstable. 
One thing I noticed most of them had in common was they were running PBO. But who knows, maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe it's actually the motherboard's VRM that are wearing out and responsible for this. Or maybe it's because I was running 4 DIMMs of RAM at 3600 MHz. But I really don't think that's the case. I believe it's PBO that's responsible. So I decided to disable PBO and try an all-core overclock instead. Now I'm running a static OC at 4.2 GHz with only 1.25 volts on the V-Core. And it actually gives better multi-core performance compared to PBO. With PBO, the maximum frequency under load was less than 4 GHz. Also, the temperatures are noticeably cooler now in most workloads since the CPU has a fixed voltage rather than a variable voltage that tries to maximize single core performance. The single core performance was slightly better with PBO, but I think the lower temperatures and better multi-core performance with a static OC is a better trade-off. My system has been rock stable for over a month. Now let's try to answer the question of why PBO would degrade the CPU so quickly. Well when you think about it, it actually makes a lot of sense. It's well known that electronics wear out faster by going through power cycles rather than if they were simply left on. The process of turning a device on and off creates a massive and rapid swing in voltage throughout the circuit, which is the main cause for components wearing out. As long as a PC has proper cooling, its total lifespan should be longer if it's left on, rather than being turned on and off every day. Well, that same logic can be applied to CPUs. In an all-core overclock, the voltage remains at a steady value. It never fluctuates, which is analogous to a system being left on and never turned off. When PBO is enabled, the voltages are constantly swinging up and down depending on the load. It's actually worse in light to medium workloads because PBO sets a higher frequency for single core workloads, compared to lower frequencies for multi-threaded workloads. Higher frequencies equals higher voltages, so it's normal for Ryzen 3000 and 5000 series CPUs to see voltages as high as 1.5 volts while PBO is enabled. And like I just said, the CPU will be constantly spiking up and down to this voltage during light and medium workloads. Well, this is analogous to a system being turned on and off all the time. The sudden bursts of voltages are constantly wearing it down. Which leads me to my final points. Has AMD done thorough testing to determine if PBO is causing faster degradation? Is PBO something they should be marketing as a selling point for their CPUs? Also, if PBO indeed is causing faster degradation, does this problem persist in their new Zen 4 CPUs? Every review I've seen for the new CPUs have cited temperatures as a concern, as they easily get up to 95C under many workloads. AMD says this is by design to maximize performance. But still, anyone who knows anything about electronics knows that 95C is really toasty and approaching the thermal limit for these components, which usually isn't a good thing. I believe this is evidence that Moore's Law truly is dying. For decades, the industry has been able to improve performance through architectural improvements to boost the IPC and by moving to smaller process nodes to improve power efficiency. Increasing the overall power consumption typically isn't done because it's not sustainable to constantly raise the power limit every single generation. But it seems that trend is finally coming to an end now. And chip designers are forced to use less desirable methods to gain that extra performance, such as running the silicon to its absolute maximum thermal limit and by cranking up the power consumption. This is true not only for AMD, but Intel and Nvidia as well especially with their latest generation of products that were just released this month. So to wrap everything up, I highly recommend disabling PBO and set your memory to the officially supported speed of 3200 MHz to ensure stability and for peace of mind. Also, I think a static all-core overclock is a much better idea than PBO. But what do you guys think? Do you agree with my theory on PBO? Has your system also experienced stability problems? Let me know in the comment section below. 
If you enjoyed this video then be sure to like it, and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to get notified when new videos come out. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.